Morning, back out again. This time I'm up in the town of Morpeth in Northumberland, sort of on the south edge of Northumberland. So we're going to have a little walk around the, the town and then uh, head up north and uh, do a little walk. Probably about I don't know, seven mile. So, I haven't got the little fella today. We did a big 12 miler yesterday up in Alwinton, so he's uh, he's quite cozy in his bed. I think I'm doing a big one again tomorrow, so I just thought I'd give him a bit of rest. So <clears throat> just gonna head off, see what I can find today, find myself on me Jack Jones. <laughs> And uh, just warm up the muscles and then hopefully do another big one tomorrow. Oh, this is a lovely, lovely autumnal day. So we're just going to head down to a place called Carlisle Park, which is in Morpeth. Which is a bit funny. It'd be funny if they had one in Carlisle called Morpeth Park, like, but I don't think they have. <laughs> um, so yeah, so have a look around the town. Leave the town head north. Up into the fields, maybe find a bit of woodland, and then just have a little wander back and we'll see what we can find. Keep watching. There's the old law court of Morpeth, which by the looks of it is now a Fort L. Um, lovely looking building though, isn't it? Yeah, really nice. I've seen the form of like a castle or a keep. So opposite the court is the entrance to Carlisle Park. So we'll have a walk up here and see what we can find. famous person who lived up here was the suffragette called Emily Davison um, who was getting the votes for women and if you look in history she threw herself under the king's horse and got killed unfortunately Okay, behind me is Morpeth Castle, which is on the the hill opposite the Law Court. I think a lot of people get mixed up and think the Law Court was uh, originally Morpeth Castle. I know I did until I happened to stumble across this. But yeah, this is the actual Morpeth Castle. Not really much to see. It's not that big, and you can't go in, but still worth a little visit if you're up here. Walk through the park. So we'll continue down and we've climbed up the hill we're going to go down the hill and head towards the actual park itself and then through the town centre and uh, head north do a walk What do you feel 
Little pit stop en route. Got some provisions. Okay, so just left my up of Town Hall and um, popped into Greg's for a few little supplies. Just for my lunch. Um, so yeah, so we're just coming back to meet the River Wandsbeck. And we're gonna head left here. Follow the river along. All the way to a place called Boffel. I've been there a few times in the past. Lovely little village. And there's even a castle there as well. So there's a big um big viaduct you walk under. We've just got the East Coast main line on. Trains that go from Newcastle to Edinburgh. So we're gonna have a look at that too. We'll just continue along the river for now and uh, never know, we might see some wildlife, something interesting. Beautiful day for it, mind. We'll just walk along that path there and then we're just sort of meeting up on the outskirts of the town centre again and this busy road here. And we're just going to cross this road and head up, up that hill. I was just reading on a sign there. Um, it says Bluebell Woods in Morpeth. And some of the trees go back about 7,000 years. So it's uh, obviously classed as an ancient woodland. That's mad, that isn't it? 7,000 years this wood has been here. It's lovely, man. Really. Peaceful, well, apart from that crew or whatever it is, having it so in. As you can see, all over the place there's bat boxes and bird boxes in the trees. I feel the amount of wildlife, I'm always too noisy, me. I see the odd squirrel, but uh, nothing too much, but there'll be any amount in here scurrying about. Lovely though. You know, it's funny when you've never been to places like this and I'm only, you know, 15 miles away. I've been at Mopa hundreds of times over the years as a kid and as an adult walking. I've been to Buffalo a few times. But I've just never, never actually came through this part. So it just shows you, you know, some things are right on your doorstep and you don't know about them until you find them by accident. I've hoped, oh, by word of mouth. Mr. K would have loved it here. Yeah, missed out a day not coming. Never mind, he'll recharge his batteries for tomorrow. Right, I think we're head back over the main road now to the entrance to Buffalo Woods. Oh, there we are, Buffalo, two and a half mile. And there is the main road. I'm getting good at this map reading mine. <laughs>
Georgia. Oh well, race. I've head towards Buffalo. And so I think they're all somewhere we can stop and get a peaceful lunch. You know, you're just walking through the woods and all of a sudden you clock that. That's the viaduct I mentioned before. Carries the um, trains on the East Coast Main Line. The trains that would go from say to King's Cross to Edinburgh via York, Durham, Newcastle. It's, uh, it's quite a feat of engineering. You know, sort of in the middle of nowhere. There's one um New Walk and Plessy Woods to Stanton as well. There's probably quite a few up and down the line. But uh what I like about this is it's in the middle of nowhere. In the middle of a woods that you know only a couple of hundred people are probably a year are gonna see. It's not like you know going through a town centre or nothing like that. But when you look at it, even back then when the Victorians built it, I had such pride in their work. You know, they didn't just make a plain sort of stone viaduct, you know, they, they made it look quite nice, you know, they faced the stones off, beveled them and put little features like on the bottom and that and, you know, it's not something they would have had to do, it's just because back then they took pride in their work and they just thought, you know what, if we're going to do this, we're going to make it look nice. You see what I mean as we get closer? Like on the arches on the top there, look. How oh, they've got the stone, but it's got way here. It's got the, uh, the sort of rebate in the stone. You see what I mean? And everyone's perfectly matching the same one. And then on the bottom, they've got this edge in stone. Again, you know, the only reason for it is just purely decoration. Just to think, well, then people who do come here and see this one, that they sort of admire it. So, take me hats off to you. Nowadays, it's just slap a load of concrete up and get it built as cheaply and as quickly as possible. Most of the time. Look at that, though. Weird stuff. I wouldn't have liked to seen the scaffold mine. <laughs> you know, I bet there's a fair few people died putting all these uh, railway tracks, tunnels, and viaducts in. Back then, the health and safety. So, anyway, there's the River Wands Beck coming down from Morbeth, head Nice, down past Bothell. And eventually out into the North Sea. Fantastic. Like I know it's a Monday. And it's normally a school day or work day, but it's so quiet. Loving it. So we'll continue on. I think there's a little picnic table further on. I'll sit there and get some lunch. Get me Greg's out. Hmm. Little picnic spot in the woods so we are currently four and a half mile in probably just over halfway so and little run set up my little six pad my donut my pasty my crisp and my coke not very nutritionist but you know I'm According to this, I've burned 1,600 calories, so I think I'm allowed a little bit of junk. A little bit of comfort food, it'll burn it off. So yeah, I'm going to get this, and then uh, probably stop two thirds of the way in, make myself a coffee. I don't really fancy one at the minute, so I've just been having some coke. So we'll get this, and then we'll carry on. Found this in the middle of the woods. This is a Jubilee well. You see that? 
take 1887. Probably what people used to use and used to be taken to walk through the forest from Bothell to Mope. Stop there and get a drink. Mm. And here is the birds in the river. I was having a little sort of having a look around. There's any nice quiet camping spots. There's not that many really. Because the ground's not that spot. Where the picnic tables are, that would do, but it's right on the footpath. See that? Right on the footpath there. Probably have someone walking a dog in the morning. Let's stick it up with the other ones. Look at that, another like a coat of arms on the rock face there. You see that? Yeah, it tastes like this is steep in history, aren't they? Yeah, people would have probably walked around here on the way to Mark. Yeah. Right, come out of Buffalo Woods. So, up now, five and a half miles. I'm just gonna. Got that gate there. Out on the road. Turn right. Head up the hill. And we'll turn right again. So we'll start heading back on the car. And we'll go along the top of the woods, I think. So, yeah. Enjoying it so far. The wind's keeping off. It's, uh, it's quite muddy underfoot. That. I've got my gaiters on again. Let's see if your pants are getting wet. Protect your boots as well and your pants. So I think they'll be on pretty much now until probably April. They have a good pair of gaiters. So I won't take up any weight or any putting on really, so no effort. So on the road now, I'll just go down a bit. The castle, you can't see it, the Buffalo Castle is just over there. You can always Google it. But, uh, I'm not going that way today. Right, catch you in a bit. So we'll just come up the hill from the woods, which is down there. Back up on the top road. I see the grazing. That looks like a sort of sunset starting to happen over there, but it's not because it's only half past one. I think it's just the way the clouds are. So we're going to follow this road along until we get to a building called Shafton Cottage. And when we get there, we'll take a right and leave the road and head back across the top of the woods in a westerly direction. Side tip. There's no need for it like this. You know. Why do people do that? Well, I know why they do it, it's just them taking the tip and getting charged, but, you know, it's ridiculous. But anyhow, there's always going to be nobodies in the world. Let's continue on. Right. Quiz time. 
What are they? Um, I think they're onions. So, if you think you know what they are, stick a comment on the video. Hey, well, that'll leak. No, I don't think they'll leak. So, quite a few though. So, I'm going to say onions. Anyone else got a guess? I know what they are. It's all claggy. That's a word from the northeast, claggy. Like sticky mud. Tell you what though, for a path that doesn't look as though many people would use, there's a lot of footprints in here. And some have had a lot of rain. So, you know, it just gives you a clue. Obviously, uh, there's a lot of people that come up and down this path. I'm dog walk, I think people just help for the day. Like that though. Yeah. <laughs> These beast boots were made for walking. Let's keep on going. But look at that, that it tells you how much rain we've had the last couple of days. Especially through the night I think. Soaked. The ground's soaking. sort of animal lives in there. That's a canny size, that. That must be a badger set, that. Or a fox, it's far too big for a, a rabbit. No fresh tracks, though. Wow. I don't want to stick my hand down and find out what's in there. <laughs> it's something nasty. There's the woods, look. So that's where we were just before walking down along the river and now we're up top and we'll just follow this path along until we we'll meet up with a bridge I mean I'll get the map and check what happens then that's my next little waypoint though wherever the bridge is well I'll just come down from the fields there down this track where the little waterfall and where the bridge is so that's me next marker so we should just follow this path now to a place called Park House up these steps 10-15 oh, minute walk if I get there, I know I'm still on track. Well, there'll be the upstairs so. though. Right, just after the fields behind us and it on the road. So somewhere down here should be a signpost off to the right. Some moral bank. And that was Park House back there, a little building. Richard said I should pass, so it's all good. There we go. Yeah, there's a sign. There you are. You see that? Oh, bank. <laughs> I'm getting used to this map reading lock. So why isn't it being lost? Of course, now I've said that, after what's going to happen, never attempt fade fill. Ah. And that looks like the East Coast main line there. So that is probably the outskirts of Motor because it looks a bit built up. You know, an industrial estate or whatever. So we're probably not that far away. So we must be going to pass 
East Coast Main Line. I got over a bridge or under. So we'll have a look anyway. Sort of a bit of a sunset going on. We're still quite early yet. Oh, I think because there's a lot of clouds, the sun's just sort of shining under the cloud base, if you like. It's nice though. Very Petrarasque. Okay, so we're just coming down off the fields there, back into the woods, which should be the south side of the Buffalo Woods. So, uh, where the train track was, obviously that would have gone over the viaduct. So uh, you go west is the viaduct, so it can't be that far now. Back to sort of the bridge going leading back into Morpeth, about a mile. Oh look at that, that's a perfect little spot isn't it? Or you know what? Yeah. Really good little spot here. I'll uh, mark that one on the map. Right, back on the river's edge now. Um, before, that's the lay by, where I crossed the road. Then you go up in the west side of that coach, that's Blue Bear Woods, where we were just earlier. Not saying where we were, the dogs know if it's the, sorry, where I was earlier. Um, so yeah, so it's on the south side of the river now. I'm gonna walk around here across the bridge and basically end up next to Amelin station and then that's the path I came in so just up through the town centre and back the car just a lovely walk it's getting on for three o'clock so it's just starting to get a little bit dusk and uh, just time it nicely really just get back the time at the car in a good time, not like yesterday, walking across the moors in the pitch black. It was fun, but uh, yeah, no, I'm, uh, let's see how far I've walked. I've walked 8.5 miles, so I don't know, half mile and mile back the car, and just we take it. So, yeah, not that good, nine mile that. Keep them coming, keep doing them, and uh, try and keep fit. Like, I could be a lot fitter. That's the way I look at it, but on the same hand, you know, I forget a nine mile walk or a nine mile hike, you know, it's some going, you know, it's, it's sort of like the norm to me now. I remember when I first started and I was doing sort of like three or four miles. And plus the fact when I tell people at work and that, I didn't know my then I go, what? That's kind of far that, like, hmm. I don't know, it's, I don't see myself as being that fit, but then, you know, people are often surprised how far I walked. I think a lot of it's mental though, I think, you know, you can easily talk yourself out of it and say, no way I could do that. And I just sort of have the impression, well, if I can, then I'm sure they can. But anyway, this is the back of the big Morrisons at Morbeth. I'm just going to swing around here at the left and we'll sort you see the bridge. The site where I thought it would be. The signals are returning to the town. A 
car's just over there, up that hill, past the road courts. Oh, right, back to the car. It's half past three, and uh, I've done nine and a half mile a day. That was a really good walk. Definitely one in to make a note of to do again. Yeah, I really enjoyed that. Had a bit of everything, you know. Walking through the town, walking through the forest and the woods, and then walking across the fields. Yeah, really nice. And uh, a couple of cheeky wild cabin spots as well to mark down in the book. So yeah, very successful day. And uh, keep an eye out for the next one. And uh, stay safe, everybody. Okay, catch you later.